let me introduce Mr. Oh, Feng Han today. Again. He's uh, currently a visiting scholar and research associate at Columbia University. Mm -hmm. He's also a lecturer and instructor at Tsinghua University, where he teaches cyber smart economics and blockchain. Um, he also used to be a blockchain advisor at Huawei Central Institute, Sec Secretary General of Asia Blockchain DAC Association, and also authored a book on blockchain quantum wealth, among many other works. And yeah, today we're so happy that you're here today. He's going to tell us today about how to break the blockchain industry bottleneck and overcome uh, the inherent computational efficiency of it through off-chain trusted computational environment. So without further ado, let's uh, welcome Mr. Feng Han with Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. I did uh, invite me to have a, a speech about the blockchain topic. Uh, yeah, uh, before that time, um, every time when I talk about blockchain, we always talk how to improve the function of blockchain itself. But when we uh, did some deep research about the blockchain industry, we found that the key problem is, is not the improve the blockchain themselves. We, the key problem of the blockchain industry is how can we use the blockchain to rebuild the future internet, right? Uh, such story is uh, from 20 years ago. Okay. Uh, when Windows meet internet, you know, uh, when Windows meet internet uh, 20 years ago, maybe before 2000, uh, beer guys can't believe uh, internet at first. When, when I, I know the story when 1995, uh, your guys can't believe <laughs> internet. So the Windows is a uh, very nice operating system, but just uh, based on the single PC, it's not for no function for the internet. So you know, in the history, there are uh, there was a, a browser, the uh, Netscape. Yeah, Netscape uh, grew up very uh, rapidly and uh, hope to beat uh, Microsoft. So uh, at that time, Microsoft, the beer guys, uh, believe, oh, internet is the future. So he found a team about IE. Uh, uh, so Rong Chen, the uh, Elastos, uh, I, will, I will tell his story. Rong Chen uh, joined such team and uh, do some research about the internet and uh, and Windows. Then uh, immediately he found some problem because you know the Windows is not an operating system for the internet. It's just based on the single PC. So how can we uh, access every application, access internet? Uh, so in, in their IE team, uh, they found the world simple and naive <laughs> method. They just uh, uh, let every app to access the internet themselves. The, over the Windows, the operating system never managed it and never controlled it. So uh, every app can access the internet themselves. And that time, 20 years ago, in Microsoft, uh, they talk about that they know it's a uh, too simple method to solve problem, but they think, they thought, they believe, they just uh, a for a short time method. But even until now, 20 years later, we also, Windows also is a single PC operating system, system. and uh, every apps on Windows access internet themselves. Yeah, no change, no change about that. The problem is if we just use such so simple method to uh, let every app to access internet. And, and first, every app can very easily become a virus. Yeah, the threshold is very, very low. If you uh, receive an email, there is a link in it. Large probability you, uh, you do not uh, dare to point it because 
uh, maybe it's a virus. Yeah, large probability it's a virus. It's very easy. So the DDoS attack is a very easy thing. Customers, yeah, because every app can access the internet themselves. The, the, the Windows, the operating system, never manage it, manage it, never control it. So now every app uh, do not protect your privacy, uh, never uh, protect your data. So all the internet now is not safe. Is not safe because your our protect, our protect uh, uh, security data security can't be protected by all the operating system, not by Windows even Android. So how can we got the data security? We just believe some server, some huge company server, for example Facebook, uh, Google, or Alibaba or Tencent, yeah? Uh, because it's a huge company, so I believe their server, I, we believe their server can protect our privacy, can, pro, uh, can protect our data. Uh, their data is safe, there, there is uh, no virus on their server. Uh, sometimes it's true, because uh, it's a huge company. Uh, they can't allow the a server, uh, the virus on their server. That's true, but your data controlled by them. Your privacy controlled by them. So there was a, uh, a scandal uh, about Facebook, yeah, you know. Um, I, I heard some uh, friends uh, in, in New York. Uh, his name is uh, uh, Jeffrey Wernick from Chicago University, uh, University of Chicago. And he told me that all of the uh, uh, internet company in the world just have one business model. His business model is give your free service and got your every customer's data and got profit from it. It's just one business model. So now our uh, our data is not belongs to us. Uh, what does it mean? It means in all the internet, uh, first, we have no uh, true privacy. Second, we have no our data rights. It's a data communist in the internet. So it's a poor internet. Because you know, if you have right of your asset, it's communist, it's poor communist, it's North Korea. Yeah. Uh, before, uh, 40 years before, China also was a communist economy, so it's a poor society. So now after Y Deng Xiaoping uh, did some reform, he gave everyone your right of your asset, your house, license, so Chinese can become uh, rich now because we have some kind of capitalism. So now, but the internet now is data communist. Yeah, we have no right of our data. Yeah, it, it's, it's a huge problem. So Rong Chen, uh, he is an uh, ex-engineer of Microsoft. He is in the members of the team of IE. So he <coughs> presented uh, the battle of the uh, Microsoft uh, vi virus uh, uh, Netscape. But he did some research, deep research about the operating system and, uh, and the internet. He found the key problem is the operating system in the future must based on the internet, not just based on the single PC. They must manage every apps access the internet. Why? Because we need a decentralized internet serverless. Because you know the internet startup point initially by the uh, National Defense of America, yeah. And first, they hope to have a, a centralized inter, uh, network. 
but the professor from the, uh, in, in one of the MIT professor, <laughs> many professor, and suggested to the uh, military, oh, you can't have a centralized uh, network because it's not safe. Yeah, you need a decentralized uh, network. There, there are many, many nodes, very uh, equally, uh, all around the world. We just has a consensus like TCP/IP. Yeah, such network is safe. If your enemy attack or destroy, uh, destroy one node of them, but the, the internet will not destroy, will, will not stop. Yeah. So it's a, a initial idea about the internet. But now, uh, you know, because the operating system based on single PC, we have no data security. We believe, we only, we, the only way we believe is uh, some center of the big com companies server. So Rongcheng's idea is if we have a, a Operating system on the internet, we can have a really decentralized internet. We can serverless, we just have peer to peer network. Uh, so it's a uh, uh, large profit is the Elastos have a security virtual machine. So it's a security virtual machine, you can own your data. Such, such virtual machine is a data closed content and protect your privacy and then protect your data. You can confirm your right data right in such watch machine is uh, built on the or internet. It's so Elasos in Chinese maybe some kind of cloud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So a similar idea is now from the MIT, we you know the uh, Tim Berners Lee is the founder of the World Wide Web. He's, he, he is a very famous person. Yeah, yeah. he found a, a startup a project, Solid, in MIT now. Uh, Solid hope to iterate the material, very similar idea uh, compared to Rongcheng. He hoped to launch an open source project, Solid, to decentralize the web and place user in control of data. You know, our, uh, our web now is uh, controlled by the huge company. If we use uh, our web to browse some uh, website, uh, website, your data belongs to them, not belongs to yourself. Yeah, it's problem. So uh, he found such problem. He feels sad 20 years later when he found the, uh, create the uh, World Wide Web. He hoped to start up the second project to solve uh, the, the same problem of Rongcheng uh, 20 years ago found. Then uh, Rongcheng's story is uh, 20 years ago, he, he told uh, his idea to Bill Gates. He told uh, Bill Gates, oh, the Windows is just a single PC operating system. We need to change it. We need a uh, uh, decentralized internet operating system in the future. We will protect everyone's data. But uh, Bill Gates can't believe him because, you know, the uh, business uh, reason. Because Windows are many, many profit, <laughs> billions uh, dollars, yeah, every year. <laughs> so they can't <laughs> give up his business. They don't like to change it. So until now, the Windows is just based on the single PC. So 20 years ago, when Rongcheng uh, gave some suggestion to their guys and uh, can't be uh, received, he was very disappointed about that. But when maybe 1999, when he came back to China, uh, you know the uh, Spring Festival, yeah, every Chinese will uh, have dinner together, yeah. He meet many uh, friends and alumni from Tsinghua University and talk, 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 talk about his idea. His idea is hope to found a, a futures operating system. 
based on the internet. And uh, his friends told me, oh, uh, the Chinese central government hoped to have, the, have a Chinese operating system. The reason is very simple because they don't uh, like the, uh, the all Ch Chinese to use the, the Microsoft, <laughs> Microsoft operating system. You know, they believe maybe never have some time they will start, <laughs> start the right of their uh, uh, function. So uh, Rong Chen heard such information, and uh, but he can't believe it. He think it's a, it's a joke. <laughs> so, but he answered to his alumni, if uh, you make sure uh, the central government hope to invest on the, his idea about operating system, uh, told him immediately and uh, he will return to China. So uh, after such spring festival, he fly to Seattle and uh, uh, just, uh, just uh, <coughs> work, <laughs> and he's working Microsoft also. But just two weeks later, they got a phone call from China and told him, oh, the uh, Chinese uh, national uh, defense uh, minister ministry uh, hope to invest on your, uh, your operating system. <laughs> <It lasts. laughs> oh, Rong Chen immediately uh, resigned from Microsoft and fly back to China. He <laughs> think he he was excited about the, uh, about that. He he believed it's an uh, uh, opportunity to find a new operating system. So when he came back to China, the ministry, uh, Minister of the uh, National Defense and the very high level officer meet him and uh, made a decision to invest on his elastos, uh, maybe $10 million. Yeah. Uh, so uh, when 2000, uh, Rong Chen was very uh, excited and uh, found a team most of them from Tsinghua University and uh, have a company and to start up such uh, soft engineer, yeah. But just two years later, there, there was a very bad thing happened because, you know, at that time, 20 years ago, Chinese army, uh, Chinese uh, PRA allowed uh, do some business it's it's where because in all around other uh, all around the world other country never allowed the the military <laughs> to do some business uh, the reason is very simple if you do such thing you have weapons if you do smuggle uh, the, the the local government can't stop you <laughs> yeah so but why uh, 20 years ago why chinese army uh, was allowed to do business because you know uh, Deng Xiaoping had his uh, had his reform policy, but he hoped the uh, the military uh, PRA will support his policy. So he allowed the <laughs> the uh, military person to do business. So, but just. Uh, Two years later, they found that there, there was many, many uh, bad things <laughs> happened, a uh, smuggle and uh, yeah, many, many, uh, um, many, I don't know how to uh, fall back, yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're a, uh, not, not good uh, competition in the market, economy market. So the central government at last made a decision prohibited the, the military to, uh, to do any business. They must retreat, uh, retreat from all of the market. But it's involved the Rong Chen's item because you know, they made uh, some uh, invest, uh, invest uh, on the elastos. So they uh, have, a, there, there was a very high level officer uh, told to Rong Chen and uh, asked him, you must retreat the money 
they have invested on your team. And uh, if two weeks, if you can't retreat such money, you must jump out from the, some tower 20 level high <laughs> windows, <laughs> jump out. <laughs> oh, Rongchen uh, was worried <laughs> uh, affair about that. Uh, you know, uh, in, in China, there, there are many commit suicide <laughs> about the office. <laughs> Why? Because uh, some reason. <laughs> so, and last, uh, because you know, it's Elasto's uh, software engineer that, that is not a house business. If you buy a house, maybe you can sold out that house and give back the money. No, because the soft, software, software engineer you give the money to some salary of the engineer and uh, may I rent some house, <coughs> office, yeah. you can't retreat such money. And the oper uh, operating system can't uh, get some profit and first, yeah, at the early time, certainly. So uh, Rongcheng was very difficult at that time. And at the last, he came back to his hometown, uh, Yunnan, and sold out his generation's house, old house. Yeah, it's very uh, expensive one, <laughs> delicious. And, uh, but he has no, uh, had no problem, uh, no another method to solve such problem. Uh, okay, just pass such, uh, such time, and uh, the government introduced him to the, this person, uh, Terry Guo, he is uh, a boss of the Foxconn. You know, Foxconn is the biggest factory to, to make the iPhone. Yeah, <laughs> uh, most of iPhone are made by them. So they earn many profit from uh, such industry. Uh, he, had, he had many money, but he is a Taiwanese, you know, the Taiwanese always hope to please the central government. And uh, when he heard such information, oh, Rongcheng can found a new operating system and the Chinese central government hope to have a Chinese one. So at last <laughs> he made a decision to invest on the Elastos uh, in 2013. Uh, the decision is to invest on Elastos 200 million. RMB, yeah. But uh, the story is when uh, 2015, uh, there was a very huge data conference in Guiyang, uh, capital of the uh, Guizhou province. Uh, such huge province, uh, province is uh, hosted by Chen Gang. Chen Gang is, uh, is a person very close to President Xi Jinping. And Chen Gang now is the first, camp, uh, first person in the uh, Xinan, yeah, that close to Beijing. So uh, Terry Guo heard such information because <coughs> there was many high level uh, Chinese central government uh, officer will, will, uh, will come. So he, brought, he, he believed it's an opportunity to give some gifts to, to the central government and brought Rongcheng to Guiyang. And last, they meet the vice premier of China. And uh, Terry Guo asked two questions. Uh, first question is, uh, do you think we are Chinese? Uh, the answer is uh, certainly, uh, because you are Taiwanese. Uh, Taiwan belongs to China, so you are Chinese. <laughs> but second question is, uh, do you think our operating system, Elastos, is a Chinese operating system? Uh, the answer is, um, what is your third question? <laughs> the answer. Yeah. Uh, so Terrigo was very disappointed about that. Yeah, the, the gift is not received by the government. And when he came back to Shanghai, he told Yongchen he will stop, stop the invest, uh, invest on the Elastos. But he, he was uh, mercy <laughs> about uh, that he did not uh, ask Yongchen return his, his money. <laughs> yeah. So until 2016, 
呃，蓉城 meet meet， 呃 ，because 蓉城 found the blockchain that we believe 呃，蓉城 s idea is right about the operating system， but he he needs the blockchain because the blockchain solve the problem is blockchain can give his operating system is a decentralized ID. If you do not have a decentralized ID, DID, you you can't use the virtual machine to protect customer's data. Uh, if you I you you have no ID, you can't confirm your data rights. So the blockchain's function is uh, they can give the DID or some ledgers or some coin reward to all the operating system. If you need some trust compute, compute, computation in your operating system, you need some reward. So the, the blockchain can, can have some, uh, can you sell some coin yeah, to reward about that. So blockchain can solve the elastic key point of the problem but also i found the elastos can solve the blockchain's problems why you know the blockchain uh in the 2007 is a bull market but the blockchain uh for example the bitcoin or ethereum just have the chain a chain a blockchain is a very weak computational system because it's decentralized one. Sovereign nodes must be uh, <coughs> must run in the same time. So they no efficiency. They sen sen uh, sen uh, sacrifice the efficiency to have some trust is blockchain. So if you just have chain, they can't run a uh, um, you can't run a Mm, re, uh, reality application on it because the chain is a very weak compute, computing uh, efficiency. Yeah, it's a problem. So last year, even we have a bull market, no reality apps on yourself can run on the chain. It's, it's no opportunity. It's, uh, uh, they have no enough uh, proper uh, um, power to to run your apps, so it's a bottleneck of the blockchain industry. But Elastos have a virtual machine is outside the chain. It's uh, it's a key point. If you have a virtual machine outside the chain, not as uh, Ethereum. Ethereum is uh, virtual machine run on the chain. Is uh, is can't divide it, but because Elastos founded created by Rong Chen twenty years ago, so there there was no blockchain at that time. So they certainly uh, made a uh, design his virtual machine their data content uh, outside the chain. So if their <laughs> if their virtual machine is uh, trust computing system connected to the blockchain, all of them will be, have a, a trusted environment in the future. They, they can run your D apps. Uh, it's a relay platform to run your D apps, decentralized apps, and protect your data. So we, when I discussed with Rong Chen about that in 2017, 17, we believe it's a, a blockchain industry future because it will break the bottleneck of the uh, blockchain industry. Because if, if you have no such uh, trusted com computing environment outside the chain, uh, you can't run the true apps, the apps uh, in, in all of the application. Tell me, how do you ensure trust in the virtual machines? Uh, yes, very, very nice problem. It's a problem now. I, I will 
you'll get there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, there, there are many uh, projects about that. I will talk. About it. I will introduce. Yeah. Uh, I have to give you the uh, following story. Then uh, and uh, also and um, at that time. Uh, Rong Chen's team have uh, have no money because the uh, Tyrego invest their team's money have uh, paid out. Yeah. So uh, I finished some uh, ICO for them and I invited the uh, Bitman. Uh, Ji Han Wu is uh, Bitman's founder. He why I invited him because he controlled more than half of the Bitcoin's hash rate. Yeah, uh, because I believe if we hope that Elastos is a, a future's internet uh, uh, trust computate, computation, he need the uh, most power of hash rate to protect them. Uh, you know, certainly Bitcoin has the largest one and the Jihan will control most of them. So I invite him he, uh, him to enjoy invest on the uh, Elastos. Uh, until now, we do, uh, we do many research about the uh, trust computing uh, environment. We know there are two uh, key uh, important teams. One <coughs> is from Berkeley, also is lab. They hope to build in a privacy <coughs> privacy preserving cloud computing platform on blockchain. A similar idea. They hope to have everyone's uh, privacy computing cloud. You know, now Amazon uh, cloud is public one. So your data can be protected by such cloud, a computing cloud. But uh, all this lab hope to find that privacy uh, computing cloud. So they hope to protect your privacy and uh, your uh, data rights. It's a similar idea as uh, uh, Elastos uh, virtual machine. Uh, Elastos hope to find the close content of the virtual machine, so protect your privacy and data. <coughs> and uh, we found another project from MIT, it's Keystone. It's an open source project for building trust execution environment, TE. TE is famous now, uh, with security hardware uh, in place. So um, I, I have talked with them and uh, maybe uh, next December, I will fly to uh, Silicon Valley to meet the OCS lab. Uh, we hope to cover it with them. Um, so we believe in the future the uh, blockchain uh, plus blockchain plus the com trust compute computing environment will fund the uh, internet 2.0. Uh, what is the next internet? First, our data privacy is totally protected. <coughs> yeah. So second, you have your DID. So you can uh, confirm your data right and uh, you own your data. Then your digital works can become asset and capital. Um, um, as you know, if you do not have your right of your digital work, it's a communist. If you have your right of your digital works, it's capitalism. So we believe in the future, um, every your, your digital works can become your, your capital. Um, certainly, for example, now if you have uh, some music, you found some music or movie on internet, if you send to another person, it's a copy, right? And it's not a right. But in the future, if, you can use your DID to confirm your, your rights of the digital works. It's a, it's a kind, some concept of the asset. It's a limited 
amount issued like Bitcoin. Why Bitcoin has such high price? Because it's limited amount. Uh, maybe uh, 21st, uh, 21 million, yeah, uh, Bitcoins. Yeah, so limited amount issued is uh, asset. If you send uh, Bitcoin also has some kind of data, but if you send, uh, if I send you a uh, Bitcoin, I must lose one, right? Because it's uh, it's an uh, asset. Yeah, not as if I copy some files, uh, some document to you. I have one. I have one also. It's just a copy. But Bitcoin, if if uh, uh, if it's an uh, asset, it's no double spending. So in the future, if we have a trust computing environment, <laughs> you know, you can uh, confirm your right on the blockchain. Also, you can trusted computing environment protect your right. Yeah, it's not uh, it's not fake. Yeah, if I uh, exchange uh, my digital works to you, I must lost it. Right, like Bitcoin. So it's a future. So we believe in the future, we not have a free internet. We have a wealthy internet. Our our digital right will be protected. And uh, so the off-chain trusted computing environment can organize trustless parties to achieve huge AI engineering program. You know. The AI now uh, pushed by the big data training, yeah, every AI. But just huge company, internet company can do such issue. Why? Because they have big data. They have uh, controlled many customers' data, so they can uh, train their AI. But it's not uh, easily illegal because the data belongs to every customer, <coughs> not belongs to you. So we believe in the future, the AI, if you have an AI, need to some data to train it, to let your uh, uh, machine learning to learn, you must uh, use customers, customers' data and uh, have their allowed and uh, their license and uh, uh, give some profit for the owner of the data, then you can use it and can't change it. So certainly it's need a uh, blockchain and uh, trusted uh, computing environment in the future. So we believe uh, the AI uh, is a huge application of the uh, blockchain in the future. And also the blockchain computing scalability can be achieved, can be improved uh, uh, hardly, uh, improved better because you know, if, if you have no off-chain operating system, uh, you, you can't run the very complex uh, smart contract just on the chain because the chain is a very weak computing system. It decentralized many, many nodes. So we need, uh, uh, in the future, we believe if we have an off-chain trusted computing environment, we can uh, run the true uh, decentralized application and complex computing, uh, and in the trust one. So at last, we believe uh, in the future, we must extend the trust outside the blockchain to the computing cloud in all the internet, not just on the chain. So we believe it's the blockchain industry's future. Also, the blockchain will change the future internet. We believe in the future, our internet is not a free internet. Uh, it's not a communist internet. We believe we have a data capitalism internet. We can got profit and wealth from our data. Okay, it's my 
lecture. So okay. I, I, yeah. I'm thinking that mm. if I have ownership of my data, yeah, I'm going to be able to sell it to Facebook and then sell it to Twitter and then sell it to Mastercard and then sell it to American Express and then sell it to Target. Yeah. Or am I selling it to one, to to uh, uh, the universe and everybody gets to use my data? No, I believe. And first, in the future, uh, the Facebook need to decentralize one. Also, Amazon need a decentralized one. Every decentralized service, uh, <coughs> you can own your data. If someone need your data to do some business, he will uh, invite you and uh, have your license, have your allowed. And uh, maybe you can make some smart contract and give some profit to you. So, and first, on Elasto, we, we have a decentralized WeChat. You know, WeChat is very popular in Chinese now. Maybe a billions person on it to talk, but the data of the customer controlled by the person. It's, it's uh, we don't, it's not, uh, uh, it's not make sense. In the future, uh, now Elastos have a decentralized WeChat. So every customer, if you have DID, you can own your information. So, so what if my information is only worth one penny or one dollar? What, what, what um, difference does it make? Yeah, and first, you, you can imagine in the future, if you uh, have your data rights, and first, if you hope to applicate some, uh, some a credit card in the bank. You can use your data to them, but they must uh, have some trusted computing, computing to anal uh, analyze your data. And uh, I believe they will give you the uh, fair uh, limitation, fair number of the credit credit card. There. But now they have no your big data. They, I believe they are information is very poor about you and give you very little <laughs> credit. Uh, it, it's so, you know, in, in China, I, I don't know in the American situation, in China, the Alibaba and the Tencent can, can give you some credit themselves because they have your big data. But, they, they can or they do? Yeah? They can or they do? They can and they do. <laughs> yeah. Now, so I believe in the future, everyone can uh, applicate, use your big data to, uh, to applicate your credit from every bank all around the world. It's very customers and uh, efficiency to give, give back your, because you, if you use AI, I believe it's a very simple easier to, to analyze your, your data. Uh, it's just the first thing, but second, I believe, uh, your data have uh, many, many another profit you don't know <laughs> because controlled by the big company. Uh, for example, your, your works, yeah? Your some idea, your some, uh, business uh, project uh, about the future, many, many, even your relation, you know, relation in, in China, uh, for Chinese, they always focus on relation. Why? Because relation is most important resource of economy, certainly. But until now, the relation can't be price. Why? Because relation now is some kind of data, but such data can be confirmed and uh, can be cached by some method. I believe in the future, if you have very rich re relation resource, for example, on Facebook or, or on some social community LinkedIn. <laughs> network. LinkedIn. LinkedIn, yeah. LinkedIn. Yeah, certainly it's expensive. Yeah, but now we have no, uh, you, your data on LinkedIn belongs to LinkedIn, not belongs to you. <laughs> it's a problem. Yeah. So. 
Okay. Uh, you mean some company illegal on your data? Yeah, I mean, for example, the healthcare is in the secondary. Ah, yes. And hospitals, they are legally on patient data. And um, for example, a consumer, a non company, they also legally own the data. So, uh, uh, are you envisioning any type of like changes in regulations to address that type of misinformation? Um, I don't think it's legal. For example, if your if some co company use your data to to get some profit, it's a scandal thing. I don't think it's a regular thing. Uh, that what you saying is that in, in the U.S. in the healthcare there is there's what is called a legal capture. Ah, it's the phrase. So, so meaning it's it's been deadlocked because the people who owe the data are not incentivized to let go. Uh, you, you can, as a patient, get copies of all your medical reports. You get a two inch stack of paper. And the hospitals and institutions make it very difficult yeah, for you exactly. to get access to your digital data. Could be paper. But I know, I know the situation. Uh, I know in China, the, the hospital control uh, legally. <laughs> uh, yeah, legally, uh, have your uh, health, uh, have your um, some some your your body's your your health's information. Uh, but the scandal is they sold out your information to some factory of the medicine. I don't uh, in, in China it's the normal normal situation. They sold out information, but I don't know what's the case about in the. Well, they just do it differently. Yeah, they, America. They, they, the pharmaceutical mm. companies bribe the doctors to use their products. They don't necessarily use our information. To yes, they give some. In format. China, they give money to the to the hospital and uh, and uh, some uh, doctor. I believe in the because the person's idea will change. Uh, before that time, we don't know such situation. Uh, many of the time, such situation hurt our health because our information sold out to some factory and uh, and the uh, medicine factory uh, have your information and give you some some uh, medicine you do not need. Yeah, in China, I, I, I'm familiar for China situation, but I guess in the future, if the patient found such situation, he will, uh, he will, uh, to, to protect their rights. Uh, I believe. Uh, so I believe in the future, even the, if you hope to check your body, uh, every year, I hope it's a decentralized organization, and. Uh, the, the information, the data of your body belongs to you, not belongs to only centralized organization. I believe in the future. Because everyone understand his, uh, his information uh, themselves is uh, very expensive. Yeah. Because in the future, many, many factories, many companies, many AI need to use your information your data to do some research, uh, yeah, to do business, certainly. Yeah. But no, you, you have not such right. <laughs> I, I believe even in China, the government have discussed such situation and changed the law. Yeah, I don't believe uh, in the future we are always allowed such <laughs> situation anyway, will be legal. <laughs> I, I believe it will be changed. <laughs> okay.
Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, what do you think is the role for understanding um, behaviors and actions <laughs> that we raise uh, as this uh, work develops? So it seems to me that um, concepts like creating, um, getting into a contract situation and a transaction, yeah. uh, owning, using those verbs, those uh, it's very different for an individual to yeah. create or to use yes. and for a system to yeah. create or use. And so it's those, uh, those the terminology will require some more yeah. exploration. Very good question. I, I believe in the future, some special domain will, uh, will kind of, will change early. For example, your digital works, I believe, your music, your game, the game creator, the movie creator, they will, you know, the game creator now deprived by the platform. Very, very lucky. Yeah. So there are, I heard many, many uh, game creator and uh, talk to me and uh, so, uh, hope to help. They hope to have a decentralized platform. They, uh, they can issue their works themselves and stop money from the, the customer straight now by the platform. Now, if you have a music, you have a great song, 90% of the profit. <laughs> yeah, deprived yeah, by the platform. Yeah. Yeah. You have a very little <laughs> profit from uh, to give you. Uh, I believe it's the first demand that will be changed in the next year because there are many, many projects about that. And the next demand may be AI. You know, the AI is the big data. Uh, I believe the AI, uh, the AI industry do not satisfy the AI just controlled by big, big internet company because now just the internet company have big data. The little company, no, uh, even single person have no big data. But if we have a, in the future, if we have a decentralized uh, cloud uh, memories uh, of the data, you can have some method to buy and some uh, region to have profits. You can use everyone's data. And you can draw profit from the, our AI project yeah, in the future. So it's, we, we can organize the trustless party to organize themselves. Similar as Bitcoin. Yeah, Bitcoin is a decentralized one. Satoshi was disappointed uh, in uh, 2012. But why Bitcoin won works until now? Because it's a consensus. So the history proof is a decentralized consensus will work. Yeah, in the future. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you.